family, I'm excited to get into the Word of God with you this morning. Come on, bro. And uh, I just want to start off by thanking you, Ray, for uh, leading us in communion right there. Yeah. Thank you, my dear brother, for helping us connect with the cross. And uh, what can we say about the Garcias? Uh, I don't know whether you fall into the banana peel right there or the mango, I don't know. Uh, whatever it is, God wants you to be fruitful in your finances, amen? So I appreciate you guys inspiring us right there. Uh, very, very encouraging. And, uh, it is awesome to have family. I mean, it's awesome to have Trish. Thank you so much, bro, for leading us in song right there. Yeah. So you got to be with your sister. Super encouraging. Uh, but to see all of you, I'm excited to get into the Word. We turn to Luke chapter 5. And I hope you're ready to hear the Word of God this morning. Yeah. Inspired by His Word. It's going to be called higher. We are a Bible church. And uh, hopefully you follow along. Hopefully you brought a Bible. Uh, if you didn't, that's okay. Hopefully your neighbor wants to share with you. Uh, and if they don't want to share, well, shame on them. You are in church this morning. <laughs> Let's be like Jesus. we me turning to Luke chapter 5. Uh, if you were our guest a couple of weeks ago, uh, we studied out the beginning of this and the calling of Peter. A more intimate moment of the calling of the first disciples. And we saw Jesus calling Peter and calling him to be a fisher of men. And Peter and his co-workers caught that dream to go be fishers of men. And now Jesus right here, we're about to read this morning, is going to give these fishers of men their very first fishing lesson. On how to be like Jesus and how to reach out and touch someone. The title lesson this morning is, Jesus is Willing. Well, what is Jesus willing to do? Well, he's willing to reach out and touch. And maybe that's what you need this morning. You need a touch from Jesus this morning. Let's dig into the Word of God right here in Luke chapter 5. You guys ready? Verse 12 says, Well, Jesus is one of the towns. A man came along who was covered with lepers. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priests. And offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sickness. But Jesus often went through to lonely places and prayed. I love that last scripture right there. Some people like to think that Jesus was an introvert because he got to lonely places. But that's not the point of my last scripture. Amen. Amen. Although I can relate to Jesus right there. He needed to get away to a lonely place. Yeah. But we find this moment. You can imagine this scene right here. Because Jesus heals a guy that we just read. With lepros. Right. During this time, that was such an infectious disease. It was highly contagious. And it wasn't curable. So you can imagine this moment. And how this guy must have been feeling for his life. And maybe his life went something like this. That he was about 30-something. He had a couple of kids. And he'd been married for a while. One day going out to his job. And he's on the job and he's working. And then he notices. Oh, I got, a, I got a spot on my arm. What's that all about? That wasn't there yesterday. And he looks at it. And I just I got a little bit, I might ignore it. It goes about his day. A couple of days go by. He notices. That spot's still there. It's getting a little bit bigger. Whoa. Okay. okay. A few more days go by. Now that spot is definitely kind of taking over his arm, but he's got other spots on his body. Now he knows, like, I probably now probably should go to the doctor. You know, most men don't like to go to the doctor. Either. True, right? 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 You're still like, we're going to soldier on right here. Yeah. All right? But it's bleeding. That's okay. Put a bandage around it. Yeah. But he goes and sees the doctor. And the doctor sees 
and immediately knows, oh, I'm sorry. I've got some bad news. What? You have lepers. What? And hearing that, the shock that came over him, because he knows, like, oh my goodness. That is terrible. And the doctor tells him, like, here's the thing, man. This is not good. Here's the reality of your life right now in this moment. It is about to change. You can't go home. Yeah. Because it was contagious. I'm sorry. You, you can't go home. You can't go see your family. You can't see your kids, your wife, and all that stuff. You now have to be isolated outside this city. Yeah. His whole world just crashed. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine getting that news? Now you can no longer hug your wife. Now you can no longer play with your kids anymore. Put them in your lap and all that stuff. Everything is just changed in just a moment. And now maybe the only interaction you get with your family is maybe if they just drop something off, but they're a distance away and you just see them a distance off. Because you don't want them to get sick. You can't even have a dog. Yeah. Because if the dog got leprosy, you got to put the dog down. So now your life is lonely. It's distant. And so you can imagine how this guy had been feeling. Who knows how many years this had gone on. Now finally in a moment, Jesus is rolling through town. And maybe he hears a whisper of this. And now he's got a chance. And so you can feel the moment where he says, enough is enough. Jesus is coming. I'm shouting out. I'm falling on his knees. And I'm begging for a miracle. And Jesus changes his life. Because Jesus is always good. And my first point this morning, because here's the thing. With leprosy in the Bible, right? Really what it signifies is basically saying, you're in sin. Like that's what it's equated with. Sin and leprosy were very, very similar. Uh, and it's a gradual progression where it starts to take over your entire life. Yeah. And we know this. I mean, you know, you know this as kids and growing up. I mean, think about that. Some of you that have kids and growing up, you already see, you see the rebellious spirit in your kiddos right away. You know what I'm talking about? They start to be a little deceitful, start hiding things. I'll never forget when Jessie was little. Oh. Like, she was just a little, uh, a little child. And she started learning how to, like, hide things. It's like back in the way. I'm like, oh my gosh, you're like one year, one and a half years old. You're so sick and cute. How'd you figure that out? You know what I'm saying? But then as you get older, you remember how you, you got older right there and, and you started to uh, be a little secretive? Uh, started locking your door. Uh, right? You started to notice the emotions, starting to rage and get a little more ticked off as you are normal. Daddy. And your parents are like, what's got in you? And they didn't realize that darkness had started to get into you. And just start to take over your whole life. Yeah. But I think that all of us, we get to this point where this guy got to this point right here. And every one of us needs to be in that spot where my first point is this. Enough is enough. Yeah. That you don't want to live this life anymore. That you want a miracle. That you want to be healed. And if you really understood the spiritual reality of, of sin and how it's destroyed... It's destroying the world, and it, it can destroy you. Yeah. You would feel just like this guy. Yeah. Enough is enough. It was deeply feared. I mean, really, what started to happen is it starts somewhere, and, and it starts to rot your body. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if it's hands your hand, I mean, your hand becomes just a stump. No. Can you imagine that? No. Your ears start to fall off. No. You start to have no toes. No. I mean, literally, you're considered basically the walking dead. And isn't that what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2? We were once dead in our sins, right? We were walking dead. We were like zombies. That's what the Bible says right there. And it was just like, you couldn't even greet a leper. I mean, they had to be a distance away, at least like six feet right there. Kind of reminds me back in COVID, you know? That social distancing right there. I think now it's like jack this up. If anybody's sick, you're like, ah! I just got the sniffles, man. What's up? You know what I'm saying? He thinks of the walking dead. But society looked down on lepers. Even rabbis especially despised them. 
But yet right here, you have two people in this account. Somebody that's full of purity. Jesus Christ. And a man full of impurity. Luke, the doctor, who's a physician, doesn't just say this guy just had leprosy. No, what he says is this guy was covered with it. So it had taken over his body where now there was no skin left. Can you imagine that? Now you might ask yourself, like, oh, God, like well, what's, what's so bad about that? What's well, leprosy, it starts to destroy your body's warning system. Where you no longer feel pain. So this physical ailment was a foreshadowing to the spiritual ailment today. And that is what sin starts to do, where you start to feel no pain. Where you're just numb. Right? And it isn't, this is what, you know, before we became Christians, wasn't this our story? This was our life? Like, we didn't want to feel any pain, so we just maximized pleasure to minimize pain. You found it in the bottle. You found it in impurity. You found it in a relationship. More money. The list goes on and on. More sleep. More Netflix. And the list goes on and on because you don't want to feel pain in the moment. So I just got to pop another pill. I got to pop another drink. I gotta go sleep with somebody else. Because I just gotta check out. That was my story. Come on. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. That was my story. Because I didn't want to feel pain. Come on, Jacob. Come on. Come on, Jacob. I didn't realize the more and more I started to do that, my heart just started getting hard. Yeah. Hard and hard. It just gets to that point. You went, I just don't care. Yeah. It didn't matter who I used or abused. Yeah. And we got to be careful, too, because, you know, we got rid of that stuff before we became Christians. Yeah. And we're not careful if we can bring that back into the kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about right there? Yeah. And like I said, it destroys your body's warning system. Right. right? So what does that mean? Like, at some point, you don't really get honest about what's really going on in your life. True. Yeah. And so as that goes on, now it just it doesn't start to bother you anymore. Yeah. Woo. All right, so you just kind of go on. You don't really read and pray anymore and read the Bible as much anymore. And, and now you kind of say, oh, there's really no difference to my life now. Like, okay, well, this must be okay. Mm -hmm. You stop sharing your faith and uh, that's been going on for a while and it doesn't really hurt you anymore. Yeah. You're not a part of the battle or really fighting for souls and baptizing people and seeing people one for Christ and not a part of that. And you don't really feel it anymore. Whoa. It's just become normal. Right. Come on. You don't feel. Mm. Leprosy brings numbness to every part of your body. Remember, the ears fall off, so you can't hear. Oh. I know I got, I got hearing going out one ear. I don't have leprosy, right? Hey, 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 hey. I need to go see the doctor. Amen. Hey, 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 hey. What was that, honey? <laughs> <laughs> but you can't hear God anymore. It affects your eyesight, so then now you can't see your own sin. Yeah. And then it gets so bad because it can rot your nose yeah. where you don't smell. And the reality is now you can't smell the hypocrisy of your life. <laughs> Isn't that why many of you were turned off to Christianity? Because the people that you went to church with were no different from the people in the world. <laughs> They come here, they're singing the songs, hallelujah, that's awesome. And they go outside and they're smoking a joint. They're in there, they're singing the song, but where were they the night before? They were in the club. But they go to church so they can clear their conscience. And they just don't care anymore. They don't think there's nobody, there's nobody, there's no sold out disciples that really want to do this. I'm here to tell you this morning, that's not the case. Yeah. You came to something special. We're not better than anybody, but this is a group, this is a room filled with people that want to be just like Jesus and change the world. And say, hey, there's still no Christians worshiping God. Yeah. Anybody got weirded out if somebody wanted to hug you or that? It would just be like Jesus. We just want to touch everybody. You know? <laughs> but the doctors called this a painless hell. Come on. The leper's life was lonely. They had to live outside. Yeah. 
that if they were walking around that and yell out, unclean, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine that if you had to, if you had to do that right there? I got the flu, I got the flu, I got the flu, I got the flu, I got the flu. <laughs> what a miserable existence. You know what I'm saying right there? But wasn't this us where we felt rejected? Wasn't this us where we felt mistreated? Wasn't this our life right now? Maybe that's where you're at right now, just, just hopeless, searching for answers you don't know. But here's the answer right here. The answer is Jesus Christ. That for us, our heart is always to deal with our heart, always to deal with the sin in our life. And everybody I put before you has got to get to that point where you say, enough is enough. Today's a new day. I'm turning to Jesus. I'm begging for his touch. Enough is enough. I want to be clean. Because leprosy was always a judgment from God. How serious is it? All right, let's go over here. Numbers chapter 12. Let me, let me talk to the Christians real quick. Check this out. Numbers chapter 12. Verse 1. Right here it says, catch up with me. Miriam and Aaron began to talk against Moses because of his Cushite wife. For he married a Cushite. So they're down on his wife. Most likely she's a Cushite. She's probably black. And they weren't down on that. Like what? You got a girl from Cushite? Oh no, no you didn't Moses. What's going on right there? Right? Like that's how they're feeling right there in the moment. Alright, well how did this go down the Lord? Verse 2. Has the Lord spoken only through Moses they asked? Hasn't he also spoken through us? Like, okay, now their heart's really getting revealed right here. Uh -oh. All right. Now, God was not fired up on that. How do we know? Verse 9. Uh -oh. Then the anger of the Lord burned against them, and he left them. Uh -oh. When the cloud lifted from above the tent, there stood Miriam, leprous like snow. Uh -oh. And Aaron torn towards her and saw that she had had leprosy. Uh -oh. oh, snap. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Because she was dead, they were down on Moses' wife. God deals with it like, no, 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 no. That's not happening. You guys are supposed to work together. You're supposed to lead God's people together. Not having that. That sin is in your heart. Now here's my judgment. Boom. Lepers. Covered. Now, they're freaked out. You would be too, right? And they turn to Moses like, Moses, please, 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 please. Can you pray for us? Can you pray to God to take us away? And Moses, being an incredible leader, not taking it personal. Right. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Not taking it personal, yeah. but he takes it to God. Yeah. God, please forgive him. Boom, what happens? Verse 14. Then the Lord replied to Moses, if her father had spit in her face, would she not have been in disgrace for seven days? Confined her outside the camp for seven days. After that, she can be brought back. So Mary was confined outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move on until she was brought back. God heals her. But still had to deal with it. Like now she still had, they had to wait seven days for her cleansing. What's the teaching book? Number one, like God is serious about sin. And a big thing right here, God is serious about criticality. Yes. Right? And, and, and he cares about unity. Amen? And right here, but because of her sin, because of all that, did you catch it? It stopped the whole movement of God there in that moment. They all had to wait seven days. Why? Because Miriam and Aaron were in sin. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy right there? Yeah. So the church, the group was no longer moving yeah. because of where they were at. Damn. What does that mean? Like sin will stop you from moving. Yeah. Yeah. It will stop you from going to that next place. It will stop the miracles from happening and where God's trying to take you. But maybe not just you, but the entire ministry that you're a part of. Until you say enough is enough. Today's a new day. I want to change right now. I tell you what. I tell you what before you're here. Um, I'm going to take a holy sip here. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. The older, the older I get, i tell you what, the more sin I see. Of my own. Not yours. Oh, yours is on. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just messing. I'm messing with David. Um, 
But to be completely transparent, I mean, more I've seen more and more lately my heart reveal. I tell you as your brother, as your evangelist, like this has been a really hard year for me. Um, I've seen areas in my life that I need to deal with. You know, this is a Christian race. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. I'm grateful for God's grace. I'm grateful for friends in my life. I'm grateful for my relationship with God. But does this mean that I, like once you know I've sinned free? There's still things I got to deal with. And I've seen areas in my life where I need to heal from. Areas in my life where I found myself saying I'm hurt. Which really I'm realizing right now is that just a nice way of saying I'm bitter. Come on, bro. I'm and I've soldiered on, faithfully walking with God every day, yeah. to be by my purpose, to come up here, to preach faith, to breathe inspiration, to keep the church moving, yeah. to do what it's supposed to do. You love God with everything you got, you love people. Yeah. And yet, I found myself being humbled and like, what is going on? Right. What I not moving to that next place. Yeah. And I got humbled recently and just like, oh my gosh, like this thing right here, it's got hard. Yeah. And I had to equate it with the parable of the sower. The word goes and it falls on the heart, but if it lands on the, the hard soil, what do we know from the scripture? It doesn't get through because the ground is hard, because the heart is hard, and therefore it can't bear any fruit. And that freaked me out. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I've been humbled. I'm like, you know what? I've got to change. I gotta deal with my heart because I gotta deal with the sin of my heart. I gotta be, root out that bitter root right there because I don't want any distance from God. Yeah. I don't want any distance from my family. I don't want any distance from my relationships. I don't want this sin to numb me out where I don't feel anymore. That's not what God desires for me. Right. I don't want my warning system to stop. Right. That's a scary place to be. And so for me, my heart is like, you know what? I've got to run to Jesus. Yeah. i got to run to Jesus because enough is enough. Yeah. i still got a long, a long ways to go. Right? I don't know where I'm at in the lab right here, but I want to make it to the end. Yeah. Make it to the end, and I want to be able to be your evangelist to help you make it to the end. Yeah. So for me, enough is enough. But as I repent, let's repent together. Are you with me? Yeah. This morning, if you find yourself in a similar spot like me, are you desperate enough to change like this level? Yeah. Oh, you gotta understand, like, Jesus is willing to touch you. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you've done, doesn't matter where you're from. That's yes. the beauty of Jesus. Yeah. And he's willing to touch the untouchable. Yeah. But I ask you this morning as I finish up our first point right here. Come on. Make sure that you don't have any secret sores. Mm. Do you have any secret sores this morning? Anything, you got some leprous spots right there, like, oh, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's a little nasty right there. Let me cover that up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can be like that. But I want to challenge you, expose the source. Expose the stores because there's so much in store for you. God wants so much more for you. God wants to work through you. Be willing, just as Jesus is willing. Let enough be enough. Are you with me this morning? Let's go back to Luke chapter 5. That was just the first one. That was for me. Got anything out of that, amen? Allow myself to be selfish just for a moment. Wait a minute, that's not good. Oh. Back in Luke chapter 5. My second point is this. Embrace God's will. In verse 13, this is a beautiful moment right here. Check this out. It says that Jesus reached out his hand to touch the man. I am willing, he said. He said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Verse 14 says, then Jesus ordered, don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice of the Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to think about this moment because the Bible says that Jesus reaches out 
it touches the man. Mm -hmm. Immediately his leprosy is gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Think about this. This guy probably hadn't been touched wow. in years. Wow. Wow. Years. Wow. Maybe he was just thinking that Jesus would just say something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But Jesus was making a point. No, 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 no. If you're going to win the world, because he was teaching his guys. Yeah. Well, you got to touch people. Right. Touch is powerful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It is powerful. You ever been there? You're sitting there at the table, you know, sometimes it's like class right there, and you accidentally like touch your classmate's foot. <laughs> you, know, you ever do one of those like, oh, you know what I'm saying? You're like shoulder, 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 like, yeah, but, right? Because you like invade the space right there, but it's like, but the touch is powerful. Right? Some of us love physical touch. Especially when I'm eating. It's like the worst time to touch me. But there is something about a warm embrace. Aww, that's true. Alright? It just is. You know, it's sad that babies die if they're not held. Yep. Right when That's true. That's true. Like if their mom or somebody doesn't hold them right after they're born and you just leave them there. Yeah. And you can actually volunteer to go to the hospital just to hold me. Oh, I always find myself asking lately, like, okay, are you fired up when somebody has a baby to hold them when they look so cute? Like, where are those people at when they're toddlers, like five, six, seven years old, and the moms need help to watch them? Where are they at? Yeah. You want to hold those kids in there? It's the babies. Things to make you go cool. But anyway, uh, Jesus says to go show yourself to the priest. Offer sacrifice as testimony to them. This was huge. You know why this was huge? It's because nobody had ever been healed of leprosy outside of Mary. Wow. No two. No two. This had never, ever happened. And so for Jesus to say, oh, yeah, yeah, hey, just go show yourself to the priest. Right? Like this was big because there was no cure for this disease. Now imagine the shock of the priests that were there. When this guy rolls up, hey, dude, what's up? I've been healed of leprosy. What? what? <laughs> he was not expecting that. And they didn't know what to do. Yo, Bob, uh, what do we, it, this guy's been healed of uh, what, what do we what do we do? They didn't know because it never happened. But God's a genius. He wrote about it in the Levitical law. Let's go to a, a, a chapter in the book of the Bible right here that I know that we may spend a, minute, a lot of time in. Oh, wow. Leviticus chapter fourteen. <laughs> what was this ceremony all about? Some of you probably spent a lot of time this morning in Leviticus. Oh. Leviticus 14, verse 2. It says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This is what shall be, the, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. Now this shall be brought to the priest, and the priest shall go outside the camp. Thus the priest shall look, and an infection of leprosy has been healed of the leper. Then the priest shall give orders to take two live clean birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet string, and hits up for the one who is to be cleansed. The priest shall also give the orders to slay the one bird in an earthworn vessel over running water. As for the live bird, and shall take it together with cedar wood and scarlet string and the hits hop, and shall dip them in the live bird in the blood of the, of the bird that was slain over the burning water. And then he shall then sprinkle seven times the one is to be cleansed from leprosy, and shall pronounce him clean, and then shall let the live bird go free over the open field. Now, I don't know about you, but the Bible is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta love the Word of God. And, and this is amazing right here, what God is depicting right here in the Levitical law. Because the foreshadowing is something. And so you just got to love God and his style. Because right here, God paints a beautiful picture of what Jesus would do on the cross. The bird slain pictures the death of Jesus on the cross. 
The bird released pictures his resurrection. Wow. And putting the bird in jars depicts Jesus dying and being buried for us. And then later in verse 14, it talks about killing a lamb. And then you take that blood and then you put that blood on the right ear, on the right thumb, and on the right big toe. Showing that the whole body is covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. A foreshadowing to the cross is that sorry up this morning. Shadowing to how everybody would be healed of their spiritual leprosy in the waters of baptism. Come on. Yeah. Remember, what starts to happen, your limbs, your, your, your hands are start to be affected. Your ears fall off and your feet start to fall off. But God had a plan to heal your entire body. The sad fire up this morning in the waters of baptism. So now, when you go and show, this was a testimony. And it was a big neon sign right here on the highway saying that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, has come. Look, I am cleansed of my spiritual leprosy. Yeah, come on. It's a constant reminder. Mm. You're a constant reminder. Come on. You're a walking testimony. Oh. That's who you are. Yeah. You know, today, it's going to be awesome because we're going to witness Lamaria get back. She's going to share her good confession. Yeah. That Jesus is Lord. Yeah. And his sister's going to take her out around right there. They're going to go into the water. Yeah. And because of her faith. Yes. And her belief in what Jesus has done for her. Mm -hmm. She's going to go down into that water. And she's going to come up. Brand new. Brand new. Yeah. All of her sins are going to be forgiven. And she's going to get the gift of the Holy Spirit. And be added to God's kingdom. how God works in his providence. Amen. Like this moment right here, Jesus was just rolling to the town and this guy, the leper, needed a miracle. God chooses the times and places. Do you think you're here by chance this morning? Oh, oh, no. No. oh my, Jacob. You think you're here because maybe somebody reminded you about church? Oh, my God. I understand this this morning. You had a choice. Right. God works in free will, yeah. but he also works in his providence. Yeah. yeah. To get your attention. Right. Because he's reaching out for you. Yeah. To touch you. Well, the times and places for Lamaria, she was actually met on Instagram this summer. Yeah. She's making her way to college this fall. But God was working. Because yeah. God wanted to be a disciple of Jesus. She starts right. school. Right. Yeah. And so Cheyenne connected with her on Instagram. Yeah. studying the Bible, and now isn't it cool, at the end of her first week, now she's going to be a new creation. It's God right there. It's someone embracing the will of God. I like another story that we experienced last year. One day, a skinny little Mexican oh. walking on campus oh. had a baby face. Yeah. And he meets Ernie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, Ernie. Ernie was a, he's a college scholarship athlete. Yeah. Sure was. Yeah. Talented young man. Yeah. Good looking. Yeah. Yeah. Those that know Ernie understand that this guy was disenchanted with life. Yeah. He's not happy. He was hurt. He was broken. Yep. The reality was in his story, he was ready to end his life. It's true. But God was working and God saw his pain. And God, choosing the times and places, the Holy Spirit prompting Jordy to stop Ernie in his tracks. <laughs> Jordy invites him out. The funny story is, I think Ernie kind of felt bad for Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> But I think Ernie loves Jordy's boldness right now. Yeah, sure, I'll come out and study the Bible. He answers the call. 
studies the scriptures. He gets baptized as a true disciple. His life is forever changed. And now a year later, he's a missionary on the mission team. And now he's moving to the very guy who shared his faith. And now they're coming to the gospel. I tell you what, no matter what your story is, God can change anything. Yes. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what you've done. God can change anything. Yes. If you embrace his will. If you've been a baptized disciple, don't forget the grace of God. Right. You're a walking testimony. You have a heart put, put God put on you to go and show the world. Let's be like this guy. Yeah, he wasn't supposed to go tell anybody. But man, he couldn't help not tell how much that God had changed his life. And he went out and he spread that because he was fired up Amen. about the miracle. Yeah. You're our guest here this morning. I want to challenge you. I understand you're not here by chance. Right. Study the scriptures. Amen. The friend that invited you out. Yeah. See what God's will is for your life. Right. And answer that call. If you are studying the Bible right now, I challenge you to see this thing the whole way through and see, yeah. all right, God, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to learn? i tell you one thing right now. It is His will. Yeah. No matter how tough it might be, no matter how much it might wrestle, or just upside down the establishment. <laughs> Trust the intervention of God in your life this morning. Because yeah. just maybe He is just trying to heal you completely yeah. of your spiritual leprosy. And then you too can respond like Ramar is responding today and even like Ernie today. Now to go and show the world how much Jesus has done for you. Now this morning as I finish up, it's exactly what God is calling us to do. Go and show the world. And then we live in a sea of people. People that are really starving for affection. They're starving for tenderness. Mm -hmm. They're starving for care. Mm -hmm. They're starving for love. Mm -hmm. They're starving for acceptance. Mm -hmm. They're starving for gentleness. Mm -hmm. They're starving for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And what everyone is begging and crying is the same thing that this leper was crying for as well. Mm -hmm. Love. Mm -hmm. Everyone is looking for love. Yeah. Yeah. And who we are, we are those fishermen. That have answered that call. Yeah. And we're filled with the very thing that Jesus was filled. And that parallel count in Mark. It said that Jesus was filled with compassion. Yeah. That's what he was filled with. Yeah. He could have said the word. And this guy was healed. But Jesus was teaching his disciples. Remember their very first fishing lesson. This is how you change the world. By reaching out and touching people. Come on. Yeah. Reaching out. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. This morning as I finish up, I pray that Jesus has touched you. Come on, Jesus. Amen. I pray that you've been touched by Jesus and you look at your life right now and you see what's going on. And, and like me, you say, enough is enough. I want to keep moving forward. I want to deal with my heart. You make sure that you have no secret stores and you can completely be restored Amen. in your relationship on, with the Jesus. Lord. Come on, Jacob. I pray that you've been touched. You see, God is calling you to change your life. Mm -hmm. And you too would answer the same call that Lamari is doing today. Yes. That Ernie did last year. Oh. Because just maybe, just maybe, God's got something incredible. If I could tell you this morning, it would blow you away yeah. on how God wants to use you. Mm -hmm. I pray that Jesus has touched you and that compassion leads you to action. That she will go and show the world who Jesus is. Amen. Let's be willing, because Jesus is willing. I love you. Take God be the Lord.